Hey everyone, today I got Colby Fryer. I've known him for a couple of years now. We never got around to record him, so finally got him got him to record. He's a civil engineer turning in, turned into a multi, successful multifamily syndicator on towards his financial uh, independence journey. But I kind of let Corby share his journey to so far, uh, how we started and where he was, to who he is, to what he's doing now. So Colby, kind of give brief intro to people who might not know you. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Roger. Thank you for your your uh, patience, ultra patience <laughs> with me. <laughs> We've been, I know I've been wanting to do this for a long time, man. So <laughs> really appreciate the opportunity. No, thank, thank you. you. Uh -huh. Good. Yeah, please. So yeah. Background. Uh, yeah. I start, I'm, I'm a civil engineer by background. I've been an uh, engineer for over 25 years, uh, large construction projects is kind of my, my experience working with contractors and um, did that in water resources uh, drainage way. And now I, I lead it. I still have my W2. And I lead a team of about uh, 10 individuals in my, my current position, but I have a great team and it allows me huge, huge flexibility um, mm -hmm. for the second part. My, my other half, which is actually taking up more than a half, but um, the, the multi-family investing that you mentioned, but I started off in single family mm -hmm. around 2013, uh, did, did some, a couple projects here. It was about the time when you could get short sales and mm. and um, foreclosures. We got two of those mm -hmm. really great deals. And that that allowed me to get started, my wife and I. And uh, shortly after that, I, I had this uh, idea that I was going to quit my job. And so I looked franchises and all mm. kinds of stuff. But mm -hmm. it, it didn't really work out because I, I figured out pretty quickly I was going to be buying another job. And what I really came back to was real estate. And so mm -hmm. ended up buying a couple of turnkey properties in Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, this was around 2017, 2015 through 17. And um, those were okay, but I ended up having to fire the manager mm -hmm. and there was no tenant there, which they told us there would be. Mm -hmm. So the tur the turnkey totally was blown out of the water. It was ridiculous. Uh <laughs> But it allowed me to learn a lot. And we mm -hmm. built a, a great team there mm -hmm. in Alabama and kind of set me up to buy a couple of the uh, Burr strategy deals where you buy and do the rehab and, mm -hmm. and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, got two great deals out of that. And um, then things dried up. No more deals. Mm -hmm. I, I had started looking at smaller multi. I, I was always intrigued by like eight doors. Of, oh, wow. How much cash flow can you get on eight? All right. I'm doing single family and it's like every time I someone moves out, I've got to pay 8,000, fix the place up. And, mm -hmm. and so that intrigued me. Mm -hmm. And so I made the decision around that time. Um, I wasn't seeing a lot of single family deals in our area anymore that we were interested in Huntsville, mm -hmm. Alabama. Mm -hmm. and so I, I got a coach and I, I jumped right into multifamily. And within a short period of time, got a, a property in Albuquerque, a 12 unit. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, uh, much larger property, we we syndicated 123 units in mm -hmm. Las Cruces, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, which it happened really fast. And, and uh, the mentorship was huge to get that started. And so it took a, a little while to get another one going, but we're currently working on one here in Tucson, a great property. And um, I also own another one in Albuquerque. So mm -hmm. been a been a really cool journey and um, uh, re really enjoyed the ride, man. Really enjoyed it. Huge learning experience. Awesome. So let's go back to your uh, civil engineering to real estate investing uh, journey, right? What triggered that or what was that thing that showed you like, hey, you know, obviously franchise, you looked at now, you know, all different avenues, but why you thought real estate would be more of the passive side than, you know, the active side, I guess, based on what you said, what was the trigger point there for you? Yeah. Uh, I think when I was looking at, at the franchises it really intrigued me. And, and I thought, I think I thought that I could do that on the side. Like I mm -hmm. could still keep my job and do this franchise thing. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. and, and so I was searching for that answer. And every franchise I looked at, it's like, no, you're going to, this is kind of full time. You got to be here every day. Mm -hmm. You got to be running the sign shop. You right. got to be taking care of the hair customers. Right. I, was like, I don't think that's really what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think really the thing that intrigued me about real estate is just, I, I love the finding deals and the opportunities that you can find. I love underwriting deals. I love working with the brokers to get them under contract. And then, and then just the potential to do a value add and create something out of that mm -hmm. and get cash flow. Mm -hmm. And and so I figured out, well, I can probably do that and, and keep my job mm -hmm. uh, at least for a while mm -hmm. and um, work my way out. And that was, mm -hmm. that was kind of really the thinking. And gotcha. so that's, that, I'm really transitioning now, kind of, I've got probably four or five years left, um, maybe less, depending on how, how things go. But gotcha. so that's, that's really the thinking. Gotcha. Yeah. So the, the, the full time you use, you're mapping out to four or five years, you know, before you go full time into real estate. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Well, no, let's get into the whole, you know, multifamily. You said you got into it because of mastermind. I mean, you were thinking about it. What made you go to a mastermind versus, I don't know, working at, you know, four or five D unit or four to eight units where, like you mentioned, to going to mastermind and obviously seems like it's been really worth it for you. How did you evaluate that? Like which one, you know, because there's so many masterminds available out there. So how did you evaluate the best one for you? Yeah. Um, the mastermind came about pretty organically. I was mm -hmm. looking uh, on bigger pockets one day and searching for properties in New Mexico. And I came across my, my, my mentor. Now I'd heard him on, on Rod Cleef's podcast. Mm. And, um, and so I, I knew who he was. Uh, his name's Jens Nielsen. Mm. And, um, and, and, and so I kind of kicked it off with him because I'm, I'm from New Mexico mm. and I knew he was, he owned properties there. So, mm. Mm. Uh, that that's kind of how it started. Mm. Uh, I really was interested in finding something in Tucson, but, mm. but the whole journey really did start in New Mexico, um, because I was familiar, familiar with those markets and was from there. Yeah. Got you. Got uh, you. I mean, would you think you would have done, uh, you, your own multifamily essential acquisitions if you didn't get into the mastermind? I know the bigger one, obviously you might have needed mastermind, but I'm saying, talking about the smaller ones because you said you love underwriting all that stuff. Yeah. It's a great question, man. And, and you know, I had been looking at those deals, like I said, for <laughs> probably three years before I really jumped in mm -hmm. and uh, wasn't getting anywhere. Honestly, I, I was trying to do everything on my own mm -hmm. and I kept hearing this thing, like this is a team sport. And right. it's like, I was like, okay, well, it's a team sport, but <laughs> I really don't have a team. How do I get a team? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And but that uh, getting into that mastermind and re really the whole thing that started it honestly, Raju mm -hmm. was um, I I started a meetup here in Tucson mm -hmm. and it kind of got me out into the world because I was kind mm -hmm. of down on my own in, right in uh, the sub subdivision area where I live mm -hmm. and um, uh, it got it forced me out got me out of my comfort zone as they say. And I, and that really kicked it off because I started meeting people that were interested in real estate doing similar things. And then it, it progressed into getting into the, the coaching program and the mastermind from there. And then that, you know, having that, um, that guidance behind me mm -hmm. and, you know, being able to help you during, to avoid mistakes all those, all those critical things that when you're starting out, the things you just don't know about. I mean, it, it, it's really huge. And then just the network, the network is, is mm -hmm. really important to get, get around people that are doing similar things. So you can partner with them and, and you come together because you, it is, it, it's absolutely a team sport. It, it's mm -hmm. really hard to do this alone mm -hmm. or, or to have any success at it. Awesome. So that That's key. Gotcha. Yeah, let's expand on that a little bit, right? You know, team, right? Um, whether business or or you're working a job, you said you have a great team. That's another thing you said. So yeah. what is the what is the I guess 
things you can share about that, what you've learned in real estate, why it has been so critical having the team. Um, I don't know if you can give an example or two, small examples should be fine. And same thing with your related to job. Why is that team, anything you do, team is important. Heck, even family, right? Wife and husband team, you know, so on and so forth. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. So can you explain, you know, kind uh, of- Every facet, that? team, right. teamwork. Right. Um, yeah, from the family to the to the W-2 to this business, it takes a lot of teams, really. I mean, my wife is my, my biggest team and supporter. Um, without her, none of this would be possible because she does most, if not absolutely everything in our household. Mm -hmm. um, there has been some sacrifice there for sure. And I, I try to be involved where I can, but she's definitely the one that takes takes charge and, and is taking care of the family for the most part. But that's allowed me the flexibility to do this. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible. And then great team at, at my job. Um, they just, you know, I think the key is having the right people mm. in, in the seats. It, you can have the team, but if you don't have the right people, that take self-initiative and take care of things and that you could just delegate things to that's absolutely critical. And that translates into my multifamily team. It's the same thing. Everybody's, everybody's got to pitch in and, and do their part or, or it doesn't work. So if one, you know, if one person's carrying more weight than the others, it, it doesn't, doesn't go so well. So like my, my current team, everybody, everybody's working hard. And we just we just take care of business and get things done. Um, but but it is critical because if you try to do this alone, you're 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 gonna drown. You mm -hmm. you there's no way. It's just too much. Uh, especially on a larger, a larger deal like like we're working right now. There's just too many pieces to try to keep it all together. And and honestly, it, it still doesn't stay together sometimes. I mean, it's tough. Mm -hmm. Um uh, but but we do the best we can and we, we're developing systems to get better, bringing in other other partners that can help us out with things. And, and so we can scale and grow it and, and and that we can go to the next property after this one. And we're not just waiting uh, to do this deal and then things just kind of die. We want to keep it going and get our systems in place to to make it more of a self-generating kind of mechanism where, where it just grows and grows. That's really our, our goal. Got you. Talking about systems, right? So when did you guys realize you got, you know, what, what point did you guys realize you needed proper systems to continue scaling? And why why is that yeah. some critical, I guess, in your... In yeah, your... One, one of our, our team members has been key. He's He comes from the single family industry, mm -hmm. has years of, of experience. His name is Adrian. And mm -hmm. he... Uh, he worked back when, when the hedge funds were buying a lot of single family deals. Well, they still are, but he, he did it previously and ended up buying his own portfolio and retiring. But he, uh, through that process, developed systems and he has the kind of the systems IT background mm. that, that really came into play for us. And he's applying those now and helping us to to get that in place. And really where I, where I figured it out was after our last big deal, like I said, things just sort of, uh, you know, we stalled out there. Mm. We, we were so focused on that deal that we weren't really able to look at anything coming up. Mm. And so when you do that, you kind of lose those relationships. You lose your momentum mm. to keep the deal flow coming and to keep mm. those relationships going. And mm. so, I think that's a big part of what we're trying to do mm. and where we're focusing our systems for that. Got you. Okay. Got you. Without the systems, then all, I guess all aspects are not working for you or we're not working for you. That's when you guys figured out, Hey, you need a system to make sure everything is kind of doing, you know, basically paralyze the, paralyze the workflow, workflow, right? Basically. Right. Yeah. Okay. Got you. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, I wanted to get back to your background and see like, you know what, I mean, basically seems like an entrepreneurial bug caught you, right? Yeah. Was that in a family history or is that something you kind of got yeah. into yourself? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's, it's kind of just part of me. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, my father's uh, uh, entrepreneurial. He's a, a rancher by by trade, and he was in the logging business for a, a lot of years. Mm. And then now now he he's kind of his own. You know, he does his own thing. He doesn't doesn't really work for anybody. And that I think that really kind of sparked something in me. I I knew when I had my first position, my first corporate job, that something wasn't right. I just didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. And it took me a long time to figure it out. But but I finally did. I think I was maybe 42 when I finally figured it out. Figured it out. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Some people take longer than others. <laughs> Hey, yeah, similar uh, story, similar story here. You know, I had the entrepreneurial bug. I just didn't know it was a bug. So, yeah, <laughs> right? catches up with you at some point. Yeah, eventually, like, okay, I got to do this now. Blaming, <laughs> uh, blaming your supervisor, you know, taking your anger out on other people. And, and then you figure out, hey, I don't think I belong in this. This is not for me. Right. There you go. Awesome. Well, in your journey, you know, what's the book? that you can share that has helped you a lot, you know? Oh man. The, really the thing that, um, started me, you know, besides my meetup and everything I did, Mm -hmm. I think the, the one key thing is, is that there's a, there's a library right by my office here. Mm -hmm. And I I was in there one day Mm -hmm. and this book was on the shelf. It was, um, wasn't rich dad, poor dad, but it was the (laughs) other one, second chance by Robert Kiyosaki. Ah, and I read that book on the, I was riding the bus at the time. And I can still remember uh, <laughs> when I read that book, just like having this, you know, it, it, it really did blow my mind and uh, cause stirred up some strong emotions in me that I didn't know were there. Because uh-huh. like, I had a, you know, bachelor's in civil engineering and a master's. And, and I suddenly realized I, I know nothing about business. I know nothing about money. What have I been taught all these years? <laughs> and so that was really a big turning point for me, an amazing book. And uh, I would encourage anybody to read it. It's, I think it's, I've read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and that's mm-hmm. very similar. I think they're mm-hmm. both, but uh, Second Chance talks more about like, yeah, here, here is, this is what you were taught. This is mm-hmm. your second chance now to know. It was perfect for me because it really mm-hmm. was a second chance. Awesome. So, yeah. No, yeah, there's another book I read, The Four Quadrants I read, and they triggered in me about learning how school, I wasn't that enthusiastic, you know, in some subjects and all, but I figured out, like, I'm a, I'm a thirsty learner. I like to learn, but it, I'm on more on personal development, health, about wealth, all that stuff. I'm very, very intrigued. But then you give me, throw me a physics books, maybe not, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, no, that's an awesome different, book. different kind of learning. Exactly, For different sure. kind of learning where you are hungry to learn, improve yourself. I, I think everybody wants to. It depends on the vehicle they choose. So it's perfect example. Like you saw the book and it kind of dawned on you, like. Like it seems like that's where the shift went. So yeah, maybe yeah. we missed that part. Okay, all right, that's where the shift went. You, you said you. learning. That's <laughs> that's what it was. I wanted to want to soak up everything like a sponge. You know. Got you. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, the next two questions uh, will be the last questions. What inspires you to get up and do what you do every day? I'm pretty sure we. I know what it what it might be, but <laughs> I'll let you share. <laughs> yeah, man. I think. Um, I love to get up and, and look at deals and, and underwrite deals. And that's, that's really the first thing that I, I get up to do in the morning. And it makes me jump out of bed. I'm up at 5 a.m. And um, I have my breakfast and then I go right right to work looking to see uh, what multifamily deals are out there. So Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So on the average, how many deals are you underwriting every week, I guess? Just not enough. Not enough. <laughs> not uh, enough. Okay. All right. Yeah, All right. <laughs> that's one of the systems we're actually working on right now. And I'm pretty excited about that. Okay. Uh, I, I would say, you know, on average, I was probably doing five, five a week, looking at a lot more deals than that. But that that's kind of really what I was uh, analyzing seriously. We've, mm-hmm. we've put a system in place to where we can kind of look at things a little faster mm-hmm. uh, based on our criteria that we're looking for. So we mm-hmm. can go through a lot of deals um, and not necessarily have to underwrite everyone. But yeah. but I'm also uh, 
uh, looking to train a VA to help us out with the underwriting so we can actually underwrite more deals and uh, be more proficient at it. So pretty excited about that. That's a good, 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 uh, good tip for people. Well, going on and talking about tips. So what's the one tip you can share that has helped you can be professional or personal. Doesn't matter what it has helped you, what can it can help others. I would say plan out your week, put it on a schedule and, um, and then stick to it. You know, I know things happen, but as much as you can, you have, you know, when all your meetings are going to be generally before the week starts, mm -hmm. you know, um, mostly what you're going to be doing for the week. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, of course you have to have your goals, but based on your goals, prioritize what you're going to do for that week and, and time block it. Mm. And and I do it on Sunday. I lay it out on Sunday. Mm, nice. So I know my, my whole week, what I'm going to be pretty much doing. And then, and then uh, each day when you wake up, I would say uh, pick three things and make sure you get those done each day. Three things that are going to move your business forward and take you in a new direction. Awesome tip. Yeah, no, that 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 really works. Um, I don't do it regularly enough, but whenever I do those three things, four things, I get it done. And yeah. when I don't, yeah, <laughs> good luck with that. So awesome. Thanks again, Kobe, for coming on the show. And I'll be sharing uh, Kobe's uh, information, whatever he has, social media, website, whatever he has. So if you want to awesome. reach out, yeah, you want to reach out to Colby, please uh, reach out to him. Um, he has a new deal coming. So anyone interested in investing, go talk to him, see, get some information and see if it's, uh, uh, you know, something you guys want to do or just, you know, just network, right? So anyway, thanks again, Kobe. Thank you, Roger. Appreciate right. the opportunity.